For months, Manhattan Beach has wrestled with an uncomfortable truth. The city once seized a black family's oceanfront resort and ran an entire community of black beachgoers out of town. A task force was formed. An apology drafted. But residents of this very white town have pushed back on the notion that they must atone for injustices committed almost a century ago. We do not want to ignore the past, but we do not want it embroidered in a scarlet R upon our chest," said Mayor Suzanne Hadley, in response to numerous emails and hours of testimonies from people worried that the renewed controversy over Bruce's beach has marked the city as racist. But as the city's inaction captured more headlines and ignited greater calls for justice, one Los Angeles County official stepped in and did what she said felt obvious, apologizing to the Bruce family and agreeing that the land should be returned. I'm going to do whatever I can to right this wrong," said Los Angeles County Supervisor Janice Hahn. There's no doubt that this was such an injustice that was inflicted, not just on Charles and Willa Bruce, but generations of their descendants who almost certainly would be millionaires had they been allowed to keep that beachfront property. This tale of two reckonings comes at a watershed moment for the state and the nation. California is considering ways to provide reparations to the descendants of those who were enslaved. An indigenous woman now heads a federal agency that once sought to civilize or exterminate the first people of this land. And many today are calling out the white-centered policies that have historically blocked black people, Japanese Americans, Latinos and so many others from owning property and building wealth in this country. The story of Bruce's Beach, historians say, is sadly all too common. And in an affluent city like Manhattan Beach, where black residents today make up less than 1% of the population and the N-word still gets shouted at out-of-town surfers, these uncomfortable details from both past and present can no longer be ignored. There's a lot of injustice out there that needs to be rectified," said Alison Rose Jefferson, who has documented these histories extensively in the book, Living the California Dream, African American Leisure Sites During the Jim Crow Era. What Los Angeles County is doing opens up new ways of thinking about how to commemorate African-American social injustices that have not been looked at in the past. Han was shocked and embarrassed, she said, to have not known what happened to Bruce's Beach 100 years ago. Growing up in Los Angeles, she remembered seeing images of segregation in Selma and Birmingham and thinking California was different than the South. But racism was alive and well, even in a state like California, and Manhattan Beach was no exception. In 1912, Willa Bruce had purchased the first of two oceanfront lots for $1.225.